Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Adobe Extensions tutorial. In this one, I'm going to show you how you can track UI statistics inside of your extension. What I mean by this is to track different things like how many times a certain element or group or div has been clicked on, how many times it's been hovered on, and any event listener you can chain to basically track how many times it's occurred. We're going to be integrating this JavaScript extended code into one of my pre-made extensions that I'm working on for Production Crate, which is our lower thirds extension, which basically just contains a bunch of cool lower thirds. And we want to be able to tie different elements and basically see how often somebody clicks on them and then write these to a file. So before we get started with this video, I do want to remind you down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel. And down in the description, you can check out the code for this in the GitHub link. And down there as well, you can follow us on Instagram and GitHub for updates on code and other cool updates. If you're not already a member of our Discord server, you can join and get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, and much more. And you can check out the link in the description to become a channel member, help support us financially, and get cool perks by becoming a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP. So the goal here is to pick a couple of things that we want to track, make a custom object with them, and then basically make a nice script that will automate the creation of, of a file where this is all kept track of. So what I'm going to start with is we basically need to define some of our elements here that we're going to track. So I'm going to load up my HTML, which roughly contains the elements that I'm going to be looking at. I'm going to use a preview box, which is this guy right here. And let's do one more for example purposes. Let's say anytime they click within here or here, we also want to track it. So that for me is called the bottom holder. So I have my preview box and my bottom holder. Again, if you wanna check out the code for this, it's in the description in the GitHub link. Um, what I'm gonna do is define a file, which I'll save to my desktop and just call it clicktrack.ctf. Um, CTF just meaning like click tracker file. And now what we're gonna do is use this object to continually update things and write it to that file. Say they click on this preview box here, I want this to go up to one. If they click on it again, I want it to go up to two, et cetera, et cetera. And you can kind of use this as a sort of built-in analytics type of library. So if I was to go ahead, actually I need to integrate this into my existing JSX code. We're gonna integrate it one bit at a time. So I'll go ahead and load up my lower thirds After Effects file. And I'm just gonna basically slide in most of this code into the top here underneath my JSON inclusion. So the first thing I'll include is my click tracker file definition where I'm gonna save a file onto my desktop to keep a JSON object which keeps track of everything. I'm also gonna copy my UI object containing any of the elements or divs or whatever you want that are gonna be tracked. In this case, whenever I click on them and then we'll go ahead and copy and paste those into here and I'm also going to grab create tracker file and this is a function we're going to define right now and basically we're going to take in our an object in this case we need our UI object and now we can go ahead and define this as create a tracker file we're going to require an object and how are we going to create this first we're going to check if our click tracker file exists. If it doesn't exist, what we want to do, if it doesn't exist, we're going to grab our click tracker file and open it in order to write to it. Then we're going to say click tracker file and we're going to write json.stringify. We're going to stringify our incoming object into a format that can then be easily put into text. Then I'll make sure I close my file so we can do other things to it if we want. Now, because this is sort of in the global JSX space, that means when we first launch the extension, it's going to try and create this file and set it up initially with our values of zero. So I'll go ahead and illustrate this by saving my After Effects JSX file and launching the extension. And now going to my desktop, I should see clicktrack.ctf. And if I go ahead and choose something to open this with, like a notepad for now, you can see we have a JSON stringified object as we just wrote here with our preview box indicating it's been clicked on zero times 
and our bottom holder, which again contains our elements here and our uh, sort of categories, also indicating that it's been clicked on zero times. Now, looking at the other part of this that makes it work and makes us allow to increment up from zero, we have something called add click to element, and we're only bringing in the element name. Now, this isn't actually defined anywhere in our JSX. It's actually gonna be coming from the JavaScript itself. So I have here for my main preview box, which again is my first property, I have an on click. So whenever I click on it, I'm gonna run a function. If I go into this preview box click function, it is yet to be defined. So what I can do is go ahead and define it. Say preview box click. And what we're going to do, we need to create a CS interface so we can go into our script. And I'm gonna say CS interface dot eval script. We're going to be evaluating add click to element. So put that in single quotes. And we need to give it the name. What is the name of this element? Well, we already know that it's coming in as preview box. We'll put that in, let's say, double quotes so it knows it's a string. And that should be good, actually. It should just initialize that. Go into add click element uh, to element with the name preview box. Now let's go ahead and just create this base function. If we go ahead and read my notes, I said to make this work, simply link it to an on click event of your desired element to track. For the name, the ID usually just works best. So I'm going to paste my function definition called add click to element, and we're going to build it from scratch here. But I do want to make sure my element name is coming in correctly. So when I click on my preview box, it should tell me the text preview box. Let's go ahead and check it. If I relaunch the extension, click on my preview box, you can see we're actually not getting in here properly. So let's see what we did wrong. I might actually need to save my uh, HTML file. Let's try and reload it. Hit the preview box. Now you can see uh, we're getting our alert of our element name called preview box, which is perfect. And every time we click on it, we're going to make sure we get that. So we're also going to apply this for our bottom holder as well. If I find my bottom holder element here, I can just say on click is equal to bottom holder click. And if I go ahead and define my bottom holder click, I can just copy and paste my preview box click, change the name and change preview box to bottom holder. And you could go through and do this for as many elements as you want, or just make one universal function called like uh, click track which takes in an element, and then you can just use like the element ID as the argument to pass through here. But since we're just doing two, it's fine in this case. So now if I go ahead and relaunch the extension, click in the preview box, I get preview box. If I click in this area here, I get bottom holder. So that's perfect and working the way exactly like we want. Now that's left to do is increment what is contained inside of this folder here. So every time they interact with our UI, we get that updated information into our file. So first we're going to check if our click tracker file exists. So let's say if click tracker file dot exists and inside of here, we need to basically read in the data for whatever element name we're looking at. So I'll make a variable called our read data. This is going to read in everything from here. And we're going to fill that in by saying click tracker file dot open. We're going to open it up for reading. Our read data variable is going to be equal to click tracker file dot read. We're going to read the whole thing. And in fact, we're going to say JSON dot parse. We're going to convert it back into a regular uh, sort of object here from the stringified version. And then we'll also want to grab our click tracker file and close it. So now we should have a, a variable full of all of this data in sort of more usable JSON format. So one cool thing we can do now is if we grab alert read data, and I want to grab the preview box element from my read data, I can actually do this now. So if I relaunch here after I've saved, and I click on my preview box, you can see I'm going to get the value of our preview box. So we can call the physical element name coming in here, um, which makes it a little bit more universally working here. 
So if I click on one element, it's going to now display what the information in the text file says. In this case, they're both set to zero. Now we need to increment them up. So what I'm gonna do is create a variable called this num, which is gonna represent whatever element we're looking at and the number of times it's been clicked on. I'm gonna set this num equal to whatever the read data array is for this. So if I say preview box, this num is gonna be zero. If I, if I bring in bottom holder, this num is gonna be zero as well. Then I want to increment it by one. So I'm just gonna say this num plus plus. Because if we're in this function, we've clicked on it, we wanna go up, increment it up by one. Then we simply grab read data element name, and we're gonna set this equal to this num. Then finally, we just have this array full of new updated information. We're gonna write it back to the file. So what I can do is just copy this code here from when I wrote the object originally. And it has all the same code we need, except instead of stringifying the object uh, variable, we're going to stringify read data. So now if I go ahead and run this, hopefully it should be working. If we go ahead and click on the preview box a few times, load it up here. Let's see if we have to load it up. Uh, if, I don't know if we can refresh from within Notepad. As you can see, now we have four clicks on our preview box. If I go down here, maybe click on some stuff and just do a whole bunch of clicking, now all this data is going to be contained within our click tracker file, which can be constantly updated and let us know how often users are using different features. And you don't again have to use this just for on-click events. Right now I just have this set for whenever they click on it. You could change this to whenever they on mouse over or on mouse out or any of the other built-in event listeners. But that's gonna do it for this video guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, hit the thumbs up button. Down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And down in the description, you can check out the GitHub code for this, uh, the base JSX code you're gonna need in order to do this yourself. Make sure you check it out, try it out. Follow us there to get updates on code. And down in the description, you can follow us on Instagram for other updates. If you're not a member of our Discord server, come and join and get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, and much more. And if you want to help support the YouTube channel and get cool perks at the same time, you can join in the description below, become a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you guys next time.